Hey, it's Mr. Bebe, and this lesson is called Life is Cellular. We're going to learn about cell theory and prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So let's get right to it with our first key concept. Cells are the basic unit of life. So first we're going to talk about cell theory and five different scientists that contributed to it. So the first scientist is Robert Hooke. So Hooke, you see there on the left, and you see his microscope slide there also. He observed cork cells under an early microscope that he developed and came up with the name cell. So he was the first one here that actually referred to them by name. Next was Anton van Leeuwenhoek. He helped improve that first microscope, and he was actually the first person to see microscopic organisms under this microscope. And you can see the picture of that over to the left. Doesn't look like a very sophisticated machine. We definitely have stuff that's a lot more advanced now, but he was the first to develop something like that. Next we have Matthias Schleiden. He was the one that stated that all plants are made of cells. So he looked at a slide much like the one you see on the bottom left. You see a little bit of green in there, and we'll go over why plants appear green. It's because they're chloroplasts. And so he was the one that looked at plants and actually said that they were made of cells. But then you have Theodore Schwann, who stated that all animals were also made of cells. And what he looked at is on the left as well. You can see the dark spots in those cheek cells right there. The dark spots are the nuclei, and there's a lot of cytoplasm all around it. And then the edges are the cell membrane, which we're going to get into a lot later. Finally, we have Rudolf Virchow. He was the first person that said that new cells come from the division of existing cells. So he's saying cells cannot just appear out of nowhere. They have to come from a cell or a particular cell line. So here's a little recap. Cell theory can be broken down into these three statements. All living things are made of cells. All cells come from other living cells and the cell is the most basic unit of life. So these are very, very important statements to know. So another thing here, when we're looking at a couple pictures of cells, a little preview here of prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So what are cells? All cells are microscopic. They are all surrounded by a cell membrane. They are filled with cytoplasm. They contain DNA and they can reproduce. If you don't have these things met, you are not a cell. All right, so with that in mind, Let's look at viruses. Are viruses cells? We have a picture here of a bacteriophage on the left and a uh, influenza virus on the right with a couple of things labeled. So, are viruses microscopic? Yes, they are. Are viruses surrounded by a cell membrane? Well, not here according to this picture. They're actually surrounded by a protein coat, so that would be a no. Are viruses filled with cytoplasm? There is no cytoplasm marked here on this drawing. And then do viruses contain DNA? Well, yes, they do. They do have DNA, uh, but can they reproduce? They cannot reproduce unless they are inside a living host cell. So that would be a no. So are viruses cells? The answer is no. So two main types of cells we're gonna look at are prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. There's a little simple picture of them. Let's look at them in a little bit more detail. So it's all about the nucleus here. The nucleus is the control center of the cell, and it contains all of the information needed to make proteins. So the DNA is in the uh, cell's nucleus. So uh, in eukaryotes, the nucleus is surrounded by a nuclear membrane. So there actually is a little membrane around that nucleus, but in eukaryotes only. So let's look at this stuff in detail here. Prokaryotes. We have a picture of one right here. You see the DNA. You see some organelles. You see a cell membrane. You see a cell wall. Um, prokaryotes are usually much smaller and simpler. So a lot of times they're single-celled organisms. Uh, they do not have a proper nucleus. They just kind of have their DNA free-floating around. And they do not have membrane-bound organelles. They do have organelles, but those little organelles do not have membranes around them, and neither does their nucleus. So, do prokaryotes have a nucleus? Pro, no. That's how we remember that. Next one are eukaryotes. And look at this, this is a much more complicated looking cell. Uh, they have membrane bound organelles, uh, things like mitochondria and other things that we'll get into later. Their little uh, organelles inside all have membranes around them. They have a nucleus which also has a membrane around it and they are much, much more complex than prokaryotes. So do eukaryotes have a nucleus? You got it. That is how you're going to remember. Pro no nucleus. You got it for eukaryotes. They do have a nucleus.